I will I will tell you why I suspect that my bowels are moving so smoothly. Is oh, please that, do. Yeah. Uh, we had varsity for lunch yesterday when we were in Atlanta. There you go. The and old, yeah. colon cleanse. <laughs> but was it good going in? I, I love the varsity. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say that it's it's the best uh, quality, you know, uh, the hot dogs and, and burgers and whatnot. But really, I don't think it's the hot dogs that really get you. It's it's the onion rings. The onion rings yeah. are it's like a it's like a little it's like a little bag of of grease and fried chips and onions and and it, yeah you know. anything else that's floating in there just adheres to the batter just yeah. goes with it yeah so so that's that's ultimately like one of the things that i i subscribe to is this idea that if i go eat at the varsity um it's gonna just clean you right through hey everyone it's barrett from the all about nothing podcast and what the pod was that to tell you that ever play sports and social league summer registration is open now through may 22nd for the following sports tuesday dodgeball Super Rec Kickball on Tuesdays, Wednesday and Thursday Kickball, Monday and Tuesday Indoor Volleyball, Tuesday and Thursday Outdoor Volleyball, Sunday and Monday Softball, Thursday Cornhole, Wednesday Soccer, and Monday Pickleball. Registration is also open now through August 22nd for the Friday, August 23rd Masters of Putt-Putt at Frankie's Fun Park in Columbia. Winners will take home koozies, pictures with a trophy and banner, as well as a donation made to the charity of their choice. Register now. Ever play sports and social league? Visit EverPlaySocial.com for details and registration. EverPlay Sports and Social League. Socialize, play, and have fun. This episode of the All About Nothing podcast is brought to you by GOT Sound Studio. GOT Sound Studio offers a variety of experiences. Music, voice, and instrumental recording and production, video, and still photography. GOT Sound Studio has all of your media needs met. Owned and operated by Dominique Stewart, the Neek the Geek, experienced artists as well as up and coming will find everything they need to create. Bring your media needs to one of the most talented producers and engineers in the business, Neek the Geek. You can find details by visiting gotsoundstudio.com or calling 803-243-2302. You can also find links in the Friends of the Pod section of our website. Visit theallaboutnothing.com. The All About Nothing podcast may have content and language. That isn't appropriate for some. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, Nothingers, to another episode of the All About Nothing podcast. This is episode number 205, and uh, I am Barrett Gruber. I am Zach King. He is. Uh, we uh, we we're, we're doing this show. Uh, we're recording on Twitch right now, or we're recording live. We're recording, and we're also broadcasting live on Twitch. So, yep. Uh, we already gave a little uh, preview on Twitch, uh, but if, uh, if if you subscribe to our Twitch account, you can you can actually watch us record these episodes live, uh, which then means you're going to have to listen to all of this bullshit again because you're also subscribed to the podcast. But Bear, uh, you also have live cameras throughout your house that records your life very much like the Osbournes. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to do some, I've, I've got to figure out some AI technology to blur out my kids and my wife. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He so talks that, to Ghostface people the entire so time. That, yeah, so that that's not not so that's not going to be a lawsuit later. Uh, please subscribe to the show, share the show as well. That's how we get new listeners. Also, if you can, please consider supporting the show financially by visiting our website and clicking on the support link. And if you can't do that, please drop us a review, hit the five stars, give us a thumbs up, or leave us a comment. All of that helps drive our show higher up in the ratings on all of these podcast platforms. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, just a little bit of show business, I guess, to get out of the way. Uh, thanks again, always every week, John. Kosas Jr., Broadcast and Media Relations Manager for the Columbia Fireflies uh, for his Nothing or Firefly update. They've, they've so went to the game last Friday, uh, went all the way into the 10th inning. It was the top of the 10th inning, and uh, uh, me and I agreed it, it was late and, and it was time to go. So it was 0 uh, 0 right before we left. They, the the uh, Salem Red Sox, they scored one, and we were like, all right, let's go. This is, this is probably going to be it. Fuck if they didn't come back. A Got a walk fight. off. Yeah, they had, it was a five to four win in the wow. in the bottom of the eleventh. So Got interesting. Once you left, this guy missed it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that happened to me in uh, uh, 2017, 18. Oh, yeah. South Carolina. My brother and I went to the South Carolina Arkansas game. Okay, we were down nine to nothing. Gamecocks rallied back to win. I think it was like eighteen to nothing. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, it became it became a slug or eighteen to nine or whatever. It was, it was a slug. It's still fest. crazy. It, it was a heavy win. I was like, where did that come from? As soon as we leave. Yeah, that's it's still crazy. So, but uh, yeah, appreciate John Kosis. You can hear those updates every uh, every week. Just subscribe to the All About Nothing podcast wherever you're listening, and uh, you'll get those. Uh, also, a uh, reminder, the 2024 Soda City Comic Con is coming up August 24th and 25th. Hey, uh, we'll be there. There's gonna be, yeah, We're going to be there. There's all going to be tons of people in cosplay. If that's the only place you feel like you're uh, comfortable dressing up as whatever your favorite comic book or anime or, or movie If you like watching are. people who do that. Yeah, you can come I, sit with us outside it, of our booth. It uh, is genuinely a great time. It really is. It's uh, such it's, a good time. It's, it's really a lot of fun. And... Uh, and, and and it's 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 great to have it here in Columbia, South Carolina, because uh, you see other big cities. Atlanta's got Dragon Con. Uh, that's huge. Uh, you know, Gar- Greenville's got the uh, I guess it's the Carolina Comic Con or whatever. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's it, but Columbia's got an established uh, Comic Con here in, 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 in Columbia. That's a, it's called the Soda City Comic Con. Yeah. And it, when we were there last week, we saw. We ca- we talked to countless people that were there from oh, yeah. out of town, and not just like not just like out of town adjacent, but like legitimately out of out of town. Like talk- oh, some yeah. people, there, okay. were, there was a couple. Yeah. yeah, there were people down from uh, Connecticut. Uh, I remember I talked to a couple of people from Connecticut. There were people from New York City. New York, they were New in town. York. Yeah, people who would go to your Dragon Cons or your New York Comic Cons, they yeah. were there too. Like and then and then we got to meet listeners that uh, that we hadn't met or heard from before. We the, the mm-hmm. fries they've got uh, they've got a they've got a restaurant in Hilda, South Carolina. Yeah. They serve burgers and tacos and stuff like that. But it's but uh, we still the, gotta get up there. I know it's 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 a little bit of a haul. It's 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 quite a drive to get but down there. But they were there with their yeah, with they their came to see us. Well, they came to see Comic Con. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. So Bill, uh, Bill Fry, Bill, uh, which, yeah, Bill Fry. Which ultimately, I, I, we, we need to get back in touch with Bill because uh, uh, Bill could potentially be our intern. So this is the, this is sort of a shout out to Bill. When you're listening to this, go ahead and send me another text message. We'll get this worked out. Bill, we'll get you a theme song and everything. Heck yeah, heck yeah. We'll get uh, we'll get uh, Peter Cullen to do a voice. Uh, speaking of, uh, I that am was Bill segue. Fry. Uh, okay. Peter Cullen is uh, is currently on the bill for the Soda City Comic Con August 24th and 25th. Again, that's going to be at the uh, Columbia Metropolitan Convention Center. Uh, so uh, just pay attention to their website, sodacitycomiccon.com, for information. Um, that is, uh, that's actually all the business I have. Uh, hey, did you hear about the New York City Dublin uh, portal? <laughs> you got shut down because, what, people were inappropriate? <laughs> Who would have yeah. thought? So some of the things, uh, some things got a little inappropriate. Um, Did one, someone show a dick? I, I don't think it was a dick, but I think we saw some bare asses. As, as soon uh, as I saw it happen, I was like, a dick's coming out. Someone is yeah. showing their dick. I, I feel like the thing that probably crossed the line, one of the one of the two things I think that crossed the line. Uh, the 9-11. One them, <laughs> one, well, I didn't see the 9-11. I heard about, uh, apparently somebody on one side was pretending to do cocaine. And I say pretending with air quotes. Uh, pretending to do air uh, cocaine in in front of the portal. Yeah. Uh, another one. Um, it was a look like a duck, quack like a duck. Apparently, like a, a duck. lot of New Yorkers apparently also showed up holding potatoes, which initially was thought to Ooh. show recognition and solidarity uh, with the hard times that South uh, with that Ireland suffered during the potato famine in the 1840s. Uh, that saw many Irish immigrants move to the United States. Mm. Uh, of course, those immigrants were also then immediately drafted into the Civil War, mm-hmm. uh, uh, almost almost immediately. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think the potato thing is potato thing is pretty funny. Uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, it's one it, of those. It's it's actually one of those historical things where it's like, is it too soon? <laughs> I really want. I really wanted like uh, Conor McGregor to walk up and be like, oh, "What the fuck is going on there?" <laughs> Is that a portal? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah that, if you were watching on Twitch, you might have seen Barrett and I uh, pretend no, to. Yeah, be, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't I, put that on. We didn't, which, we didn't put that on Twitch. Uh, we, we didn't well, let that. We didn't let that. I I didn't have it set up <laughs> quite yet. Uh, yeah. Uh, to to which even in uh, e- even the fact that no one saw it uh, to Ireland, we apologize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They probably felt it like someone's being a wee bit conte. 
Uh, also, uh, speaking internationally, uh, shout out to our listeners in Germany. I have seen a a pretty drastic increase in the number of listeners, uh, our listenership in uh, Saxony and Bavaria. Uh, oh, guten Tag, Fräulein. Yeah, if if you're one of if you're one of the people listening to our show in Germany, do us a favor, email us or or reach out to us on any of our social medias. The it can show, even be in German. We'll translate it. It's fine. Yeah. It's uh it's the show at the all about nothing.com. Email us uh or or you can uh, send us an audio file. Just tell us hello whatever uh cuz we would we would absolutely adore uh hearing from you. That yeah, would be really cool. Breaking and, news. and that goes for all Go countries yeah, out there. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but honestly, Germans, we haven't heard from you. Yeah, no. Uh, 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 India, uh, Australia, uh, Germany. If I go through and list all 168 of the UN recognized countries, we're bound to get one. I mean, <laughs> it's less email than, us, God less damn than one percent. But yeah. Uh, so uh, breaking news today: uh, the Biden uh, administration has uh, gone hard with uh with with uh trying to get donald trump to respond to debate so i've got i, I want to in agreed to it yeah june 27th right <laughs> yeah well this was uh i want i want to show the actual uh the, uh it's interesting uh biden did this on tiktok or well released a video that was was also released on tiktok but i want to i want to share this, this was good. Uh, debates to me in 2020 since then he hadn't shown up for debate now he's acting like he wants to debate me again or well, make my day pal I'll even do it twice. <laughs> Let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Gauntlet thrown. He, that, he came in hard on that. Uh, yeah, so President Biden campaign <sighs> is calling on former President Donald Trump to join him uh, for two presidential debates hosted by news organization and has formally informed the Commission of President debates that Biden will not participate in any uh, previously scheduled uh, debates that uh, that those are out. So come on, coward! Come on, coward! We might get we might get we might get two debates scheduled on Wednesdays. I heard they. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God they're both free. The I heard that CNN has announced it was it they he did apparently he did agree agree okay. to the twenty seventh and I will man in the chair this thing real quick. But yeah. uh, so I, I guess my question then is. In uh, in a scenario that we actually do get a a legitimate debate, um, I I'm I'm no, I'm I'm absolutely curious. Like, will this be a controlled debate? Will Donald Trump actually come in and talk about policy, or just I don't know, complain about the fact that he still thinks that Joe Biden is the one that's done all of the uh, investigation and indictments against him, or that it is his extreme. Uh, uh, left wing leaning judicious judicial system that is that is now oh, attacking him and it'll come up it'll be a bunch of incoherent shit but it is June twenty seventh on but CNN June twenty seventh fantastic well I will I will be sure to there's, there's a mummy talking to me right now I'm being unfairly <laughs> unjustly worse than any president before yeah just fucking. No one cares, bro. No. I, I hope it's great because they're gonna give Joe some Adderall. He's gonna be fucking ripping it. He's gonna. I, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Um, I am. I am a little curious though about like Trump supporters. Do mm. they want to see him come up and actually debate policy, or do they just want to see him come up and control the show by just constantly talking over and not actually having anything? Uh, to actually debate about whether it's policy, you know, there's plenty of things to debate about healthcare, economy, inflation, Ukraine, Israel, like there's, there's, there's legitimately yeah. a lot of things out there that could be debated. I, I that won't but, happen. No, I, I don't. I, I mean, I think that there will be questions by whoever it is, I guess it's CNN for the 27th. But I, I, I assume that there will be questions like legitimate questions that are asked but i'm gonna tell you you're asking this question and i'm gonna ask you what is the biggest the biggest thing that could determine how they answer um the biggest thing that d could determine how they answer that cnn has to pick a person oh, to handle one, this oh you mean like a person to handle it um who is moderating it do you almost have to have Hulk Hogan 
<laughs> or Jesse like, or Jesse Ventura. You have to yeah. So it sounds like you didn't answer the question. Like you yeah. have to have you have to have somebody who is going to corral them, you, right? You, you or know who specifically you know who one. So okay, let's do that then. So who is a who is a list of the actual judges that you or the the actual commentators? Oh, like who um, I I would pick. My number. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. You go with your number. You you tell me who your number one pick is. I'll tell you who mine is. Oh, dude, I'm gonna go off the rails on this. You okay. understand that, right? <laughs> I want Dwayne the Rock Johnson to moderate it. Okay, Dwayne the Rock. How much Johnson. shit do you think he's gonna take for a minute? Just like, and he he's in the spotlight. He's gonna be show busy. He's going to be like, what do you think? I don't give a damn what you think about your border control. Like, okay. So you mean Dwayne The Rock Johnson as the character The Rock? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Like, you need okay. someone who can shut shit down. Stone I, Cold Steve Austin would be fantastic. Okay. So, so in, in, in the world, in, in the, in the wrestling arena, uh, I don't and, know why the, I'm there, but I'm there yeah, with a wrestler doing this. I, 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 I think, I think that that would be hard to take seriously. <laughs> but, I mean, but who's going to, honestly, how are we going to be able to take the debate seriously anyway? Uh, so in a more serious tone, I think Joe Rogan, no, Howard Stern, <laughs> I would take Howard Stern. Mm. Did you, did you watch any yes. of the Howard yeah, Stern? Yeah. I, I have <laughs> to say like the things that I learn about, <laughs> Uh, Joe Biden from the Howard Stern Joe Biden interview. It was, it, and I, I think I've said it before, but like uh, Howard Stern, really between between Howard Stern and how he controls the interviews and the questions that he asks, the research that his team does in order to make sure that he has just explicit information about these people. Just yes, fantastic. But, but Howard also let it very much be known where he stands. He's a, he's a Biden supporter. Yeah, I um, mean, and I think you need I think you need a little impartial kind of. It's hard to find. I mean, I feel. I mean, like you know, if I were to if I were just a name, uh, if I were to name like an anchor, a news anchor, or something like that, I think any any anchor I name, you would probably be able to say, oh, Biden, Trump, you know. And I think that's because a lot, despite the fact that like CNN tries to act as though they've got this fairly middle ground mainstream news media organization, MSNBC clearly leans further to the left. Fox News is clearly leaning to the right. OAN, Newsmax, they all, they, those are all very light, right leaning uh, organizations. And and I wonder if, I wonder if they've already like worked out the details as far as uh, what it who like who it is that's going to be moderating like are they going to have moderators from from like a like a fox news right. moderator and an msnbc moderator and then throw in a wolf blitzer who i don't i, I so wolf blitzer is probably the one that i don't know where he leans but because like he says things that make you think oh he's 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 left-leaning he's a little liberal but he gives you republican face every day oh yeah 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 <laughs> He he adds uh he just is kind of monotone and at it. Well, that's yeah. what it is. And there we are. Yeah. Wolf Blitzer, some shit is going down in the Gaza Strip. Let's turn to Chuck. Yeah. Chuck. yeah I like am, you're just like mm. I am going to turn to my anchor to my news uh, reporter correspondent to the right so that they can actually give you the breakdown before I have a stroke on screen. Yeah, it's yeah. uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Like all right, so so if it's not if it's not a news personality, a news host. Yeah. Who's going to hold it down? Somebody has to hold it down. Like that, like, so like I say the rock, the rock would be like, shut up. Like, like theoretically, let's say if you actually get the character of the rock. Yeah. Right. He will, he'll be like, shut your mouth. It's his turn to talk. Like this kind of shit. Like you yeah. would really like to see. And he could like, he could threaten both of them. I mean, it didn't take a lot to go beat both of them up at the same time when it yeah. comes to whoever. But like somebody has to make them shut up and like stand behind it. Like so if you were going to pick a personality that's not on the news that someone famous, who would it be? Uh, Joe Rogan wouldn't be bad to one fact just do the fact to be like, "Well, shut up. You've been talking." Like he will shut someone down who's just being boisterous. Yeah. Yeah, Joe Joe Rogan does tend to control his interviewees. Um, I I I don't I, again. I, I come from a place where I I I 
it's not necessarily that I need Joe Biden to to win the debate, but what I need what I want is for individuals that are Trump supporters that will watch the debate to walk away from it going, I really wish that he had a stronger message on inflation. I I wish that he understood what the inflation what the inflation that we're experiencing now is. I wish that he had a better message on health care. I wish I understood what his health care plan was. And I I I don't think I don't, you know, it I I, that's, I guess that's part of the reason it feels like these debates are probably just going to be for entertainment value. And, and it's not going to solidify anything. No. It's mostly just going to. No, it's, it's you're absolutely gonna... right. So it's, it's, it's not going to say. That's the thing, because Donald Trump is going to go up there and put on a show. Yeah. You're not going to get a uh, meat on any bit of a bone, right? You're not going to get any anything that you haven't already heard. You're going to get a boisterous, loud person yeah. who's going to override our current president that will be, you know, palatable and talk about things. Right. You're not going to get that from Donald Trump. No. So that's the only reason I suggest a little bit of his medicine coming his way. Yeah. I, I and literally and, is it. You want to make a show out of it? Well, the guy who's running the show is going to put you down. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. So an anchor or, or a, a mediator or moderator that has a, a, a sense of uh, control. Yeah, um, that's definitely what you need. So, you know, so but yeah, Trump Joe, can't back into a corner at, at the very least. So a Joe Rogan would be good. Uh, mm -hmm. Joe Rogan would be good in that situation. Um, you know, I, I think John Get the Stewart, guy from Hot Ones. I th OK, yeah, that I can't I can't remember his name. Uh, Sean, but, his name is Sean something and I can't remember yeah. his last name. She, he would I, I think I think if you could I think if you could push him in the political into the political arena there, I think I think I think he'd be pretty good. I'm going to say John Stewart. I think John Stewart from The Daily Show would be uh, would be good at moderating because I think that he would hold both Biden and Trump accountable. Everybody, uh, Joe, John, John Stewart, you know, he's a liberal. Uh, yeah, yeah. He has been on. He has been a comedian for decades and decades, and I, I, I think that you know that that I. But I, I even despite all that, in spite of it, maybe I think that I think John Stewart would probably be a pretty good moderator because, uh, you know, he 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 would control them. He would ask questions, uh, and I think that I think that there's a good, I think that there's a good portion of the population that. Even if they don't agree with John Stewart, I think they at least respect uh, his approach. I think yeah. that, they, you know, um, I think if you wanted to be even more fair than that, I think that would be fantastic. And I do know John Stewart would take the role seriously. Oh, right? Yes, absolutely. The right would fry him, period. Yeah. Any yeah. point that it, it, fry him. Get Colbert. Maybe yeah. Colbert could do it. Would you get Colbert as. Uh, Stephen Colbert host of the Late Show, or would you get Stephen uh, Colbert host of the, of the Colbert <laughs> Report? He, so he's been on both sides a little, right? Yeah. Both the shows are yeah. kind of both sides. So it's a little bipartisan action for you. There you I go. think I think if you got real Stephen Colbert, South Carolinian, I think it would. I think that would be a little better than John Stewart, just from a a palatable standpoint for both sides, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Because if you that. pick if you pick somebody right or left, you're not gonna like no one wants no one wants fucking um like uh who's the midget whose wife's vagina is apparently dry and that means sick or wet it means sick uh the the midget the little uh he talks like that's my name is oh god what's his name he's <laughs> five foot tall. <laughs> Ben Shapiro. If Ben oh. Shapiro was up there, if Ben Shapiro was up I there, I thought you were talking about a legitimate short, a uh, uh, small person. Hmm? No. I, I didn't realize Ben Shapiro I, is short. What, what are you talking about? Is he? Is he? Is he legitimately like under five five? Four yeah, foot? Like, oh, yeah, I think, yeah, uh, I think four uh, nine uh, is the <laughs> threshold. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, I think that uh, like if Ben Shapiro came up, he's like, "Well, I'm here to like no." No, Ben Shapiro is not going to be fair in any any part of this, and then no. he'll start arguing with like Biden and stuff. Yeah, and he's like, oh well, wait, wait, not come only, on. Not only that, but he would ask questions, and then or he he wouldn't he wouldn't ask questions. He would just make statements. He would say, 
the U.S. economy has fallen. I don't know why it's a 1930s uh, radio well, announcement. That but, is how he talks. Yeah. Uh, so it'd be it'd be a U.S. economy has fallen into disarray after the President Biden, uh, after right. President Biden's election. Uh, yeah. Prove me wrong. It's like, yeah. fuck, why don't you how you you tell us why you have this opinion then? Why don't you- he would he would probably do the Kanye West, but he'd be like, Joe Biden doesn't like Jews. It's like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's insane. I don't know who you can moderate. You have to get you have to just get an anchor and be like, good luck. Here's your shot. <laughs> You're not gonna. <laughs> we, we've given we've given you all of these vaccines just in case Joe Biden or Donald Trump's come uh, yes, he yeah. comes out biting. It's <laughs> literally put into the the man at the circus in the cannon to be like it'll be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've like, not practiced for this, and no, uh, <laughs> it'll be fine. Come on. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, so uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, lost his only paying gig. Uh, do you hear about this? Yeah. Uh, if you're Rudy oh. Giuliani, that tends to happen to you. you. You heard it because I played the sounder over and over. So here's if for, for all of our listeners at home. This is what's going Rudy on. Giuliani lost his radio show for repeating 2020 election lies so many times that even the major Republican donor who owns WABC could not put up with it any longer. Suspending Rudy Giuliani and canceling his show. That's according to new reporting in the New York Times. WABC's owner made the decision after repeated warnings to the ex-New York City mayor. In a comment to NBC News, Rudy said he learned of his firing through the New York Times reporting. Other than being one of Giuliani's biggest public platforms, WABC is also one of his only remaining sources of income. An issue for Rudy as he faces criminal charges related to the 2020 election, a number of lawsuits, and the $148 million in damages he still owes to Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. So I'm just going to put this out there. And I don't, I don't want anyone, you may know where I'm going with this. I don't want anyone to get shocked by what I'm about to say. But what I heard is that Rudy Giuliani is available to be a guest host on our podcast. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, he'd pay us. <laughs> no, but, he wouldn't. He's broke. You know, you know what's funny is that Rudy is like, this is the first time hearing about it. No, he knocked on a door for like a really long time. Why is my He's badge like, not working? <laughs> <laughs> And like a PA popped out, I'm like Jesus Christ, Rudy. We told you about the restraining order. You're fucking fired. I don't like, know what's going on here. I showed up for work, and my badge isn't working. I've got people <laughs> staring at me. There's two police officers standing over there. And he was just I've got like a it's, nurse. It's probably because it's Tuesday. I'm coming <laughs> back tomorrow. There's a there's a nurse standing over there with a brand new diaper, and somebody's holding a squeegee for some reason. I don't yeah. know what's going on. Uh, there's a guy with a brick yelling at me. I'm gonna go now. <laughs> So I, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's one of these things that, so the, the guy that owns WABC that, that, that actually allowed for Ruby, Ruby, Rudy, Ruby. Rudy Giuliani's platform, uh, to, to have, uh, the technology necessary to push out his show, um, the owner of WABC, who I, I don't know his name, but based on what I've read uh, and every article that discussed Rudy Giuliani's firing from WABC, uh, everyone described the owner of WABC as being a a fairly high level donor to the Republican Party. What is um, WABC? Well, WABC is a so WABC FM or WABC am those are terrestrial radio stations and i don't i don't know that rudy's show was actually on terrestrial radio uh Mm -hmm. i i i I, part of me suspects that it might be that it was a podcast potentially um but uh so so i'm not i'm not 100 percent certain uh but uh i but i at least he was he was using the studio uh, to do a show and that, and it may have been that it was a legitimate terrestrial radio show. I don't know. I didn't listen. Uh, but, uh, it, so I, I, I guess I, I'm, I'm, I, I, what I'm, what I'm trying to get to is, uh, Zach, if you don't mind your P's and Q's, I'm going to get Rudy Giuliani to replace you. (laughs) Oh my God. Please do. (laughs) There's, there's, there's no way I could replace you. That. Yeah, he would be like, "Is this thing on? I'm back." 
That's right. Yeah, it every, would be awful. Every every episode recording would be of the top of his head, and you would get to watch all of the oil leaking out from his ears. Oh yeah. It would be in front of a, a lawn service center in Philadelphia. The number of headphones that we'd have to replace. Yeah, he doesn't be... know how to. He, no, he wears AirPods, but he can't figure out how to hook them to the computer. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Uh, he'd that's be fair. he'd he'd be driving a cab in New York or whatever he's going to do for money now. For sure, so, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I want to revisit uh, the Christy Nome uh, situation. Uh, Zach, you in the last episode said some. Uh, pretty uh explosive things about uh your own experiences in having to deal with pets and animals and things like that which mm-hmm. uh, i lived on a farm she just is in a neighborhood <laughs> well she was on a farm too <laughs> i was on a farm that cared for their animals it was a last resort yeah yeah and 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 ultimately the, yes i think uh i think that what people need to recognize is, is that there are in, in some situations the most caring loving thing you can do for an animal that is sick or is uh in intense pain i think a lot of us have already gone through that where we have been in a situation where we have put our animal down we have we have had to put a pet or a a, a, a for some of us it's a child i mean uh, we we have we zach and i have mutual friends that have recently lost uh two dogs over the course of the last years or year or so mm-hmm. And it's it's emotionally just heartbreaking, and uh, it, it is it is extremely difficult. I that's one of the reasons I don't even want to own pets is not because I don't like animals, but it's because I I I am constantly I, I I give I give in to what uh, my prognostication is, and that is that this dog or this cat is eventually going to reach the end of its life. I'm going to be responsible for making the decision that mm-hmm. are they in so much pain that they 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 need me to make that decision for them so they're not experiencing that anymore. Yeah, and, and the, hard to do. the whole the whole situation that we had it was three goats who got really sick and the one I ended up having to shoot was my own. And they're like to the point like they're they don't even get up to go to the bathroom. Like that's how bad yeah. the situation yeah, yeah. got. We had, we had vets out there every other day to try to help us and they couldn't isolate the disease. And it was like literally dug a hole, laid, laid my goat. I didn't have, I didn't, we had a bunch of animals, but I never personally claimed it. Claimed yeah. much, many of them. This so, one was sick. I had to lay her, lay him in the pit. My dad's like, I've had to do it twice. He goes, I cannot do this again. Plus, yeah, this is this is how life works. And he goes, I, I'm not going to always be here to, to handle this situation. And it was I think I even threw up when I was done with it. Like it was it was awful. It was I can't terrible. imagine. I can't yeah. imagine. And, and you know, but that's as, well, there's people out there running for vice president. <laughs> yeah. That take league that it's some some pillar to stand on, which is. Yeah. I, uh, I, 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 I will say, I, I think, you know, I recognize how horrifying it is to be put into a situation mm-hmm. like that. But again, I think that it, 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 I, it comes down to also that you are, because you care for these animals and pets and, and these are family members, mm-hmm. uh, I think it shows such a level of commitment to, uh, their well being to be able to make a decision like that under under of course the you know the authority of of someone in yeah. you know medical veterinary sciences. Well, it literally gets to the point like if I was in this goat's hooves, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, like, yeah, what is this existence anymore? Yeah, exactly. And that, and that comes from knowing that you only have one life to live. You got right here, right now. This is it. Yeah, uh, I we we say all of that. To allow you now to hear in Christy Nome's own words yeah, from this her is... audiobook exactly what it is that she experienced. Are you listening, Joe Biden? I stopped the truck in the middle of the yard. I got out my gun, grabbed Cricket's leash, and I let her out into the pasture and down into the gravel pit. It was not a pleasant job. My uncle, who was the general contractor building our house, called me and he said, what got into you today? Nothing, I responded. Why? 
He said, well, the guy said you came barreling into the yard with your truck. You slammed the door, took a gun and a dog over the hill out of sight. They heard one shot. You came back without the dog. Then you grabbed the goat and headed back up over the hill. Then they heard another shot. You came back, slammed the pickup door again, went back. They heard another shot, and then you came back without the goat. They said they hurried back to work before you decided they were next. Fair assessment. Yeah, yeah, and that's her uncle. So let me let me just I'll just say this. So I was corrected. Uh, I was corrected several times. Uh, on uh, on on the actual age of the dog cricket that uh, Christy Nome actually uh, did kill, um, the dog was fourteen months, so not a puppy anymore. Um, you know that's no, that's a puppy. Nope, still a puppy. Okay, still a puppy. All right, well then you know, uh, still a puppy then. Um, but fourteen months old. So uh, the number of times through either uh, social media or text messages or. <laughs> I get it. 14 months. I was wrong. I said, I said eight, 10, whatever, four, 10, eight, whatever. Uh, it was a uh, lot of times. It was a lot of off, but I will just, I, I'll give myself. If credit. any, if anybody should know that it's still a baby, it's Republicans. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, so, uh, there were witnesses to this, uh, I guess, moment of insanity. Uh, I say moment. It sounds like it lasted a little little while as well. Uh, does she just not carry enough rounds to finish the job? That's poor planning. And that's no. reflective of how she is as a governor, I think. And not very conservative of ammunition <laughs> or time. Or fuel. She's driving out to the gravel pit. She's driving back. There's a lot of slamming of the door. She's having to start the <laughs> engine, turn the engine off, start it again, turn it off again. I mean I bet I'm, she didn't even leave the AC on for the goat. I don't I don't want to uh I, I don't wanna I don't want to make any claims that sound outlandish here, but she may not be very conservative in her conservatism. Uh, uh just, just imagine a chick idea. telling you at, like that's her like clout at the bar. She's <laughs> like I've <laughs> I yeah, a couple animals. I mean, a two in one day. It's it's yeah. it's it's still quite disturbing, and I have not. And why actually, did Joe? Why did she call out Joe Biden? I I don't know. I I think you know what I imagine that she falls asleep saying that she says, "Are you listening, Joe Biden?" And then she <laughs> and then she puts herself to sleep. She Fart, wakes so up. You listening, the, Joe Biden? <laughs> she wakes. She wakes up in the morning. She's brushing her teeth, and she's like, "Are you listening, Joe Biden?" <laughs> Yeah, that just speaks to her conspiratorial uh, <laughs> right. sickness She's in her speaking head. into her toothbrush. Joe Biden, I am You're talking there, to you. Give me a sign. And then she prays to Trump, and then she leaves. And uh, hey, she's, I'm not. I'm not going to make an accusation or anything like that. But could you imagine if she's one of those type that just has like uh, very sensitive guns? They bleed as soon as like a toothbrush yeah, is like, like <laughs> spitting blood. blood. Kids, bring me a napkin. <laughs> This, I guess, mother, please don't shoot us. I'm in the dirty bathroom this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I did it again. <laughs> Killed another animal? They're like, no, bloody gums. I'm pretty sure it's because of the microphone Joe Biden implanted in my toothbrush. She comes up from behind the shower curtain holding a leg of a goat. Like, I did it again. It was. It wasn't natural. This time either. with my bare hands. <laughs> She's a succubus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a little insane. But yeah, so yeah, it uh, makes it when you're painting Sarah Palin in a prettier light. It's a uh, pretty insane. Uh, yeah, I, you know, Sarah Palin was just dumb. Uh, well, yeah, she's like, I shoot moose from a helicopter. At least I got to run. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. She did, she did, she did talk about shooting muse, moose from <laughs> mises from her uh, from her helicopter. Moose and mises. Uh, she could see, uh, she could see Alaska. <laughs> she could see Russia from her. I can see Russia. No, she didn't actually say that. That was that was Christian Wig. Uh, but it was. Listen here, it was Get your ass out there and start noodling catfish holes, and we'll talk about how badass you are. And you know what? I'm just gonna say this again. And I know it's not popular among the people that I think it should be popular with. There should not be a North and a South Dakota. There shouldn't <laughs> be a, that we should not have a Wyoming, South Dakota, North Dakota. Those should just be the <sighs> Dakota territories. It should, it, they can be state. They can be a state. It's just the Dakota. It's just Dakota. You know, well, the Wyoming has, you know, your national parks and I, stuff, but they would be included in Dakota. 
Think of all of the national parks now. We don't need Texas 2.0, Barrett. God damn it. (laughs) I'm just just saying, (laughs) I'm still dumbfounded by how three states that have a population that may be, and I'm not, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but but the population total uh, may be in the three million range between the three states has six senators to it. It's got at least six uh, representatives to Congress. I'm guessing they probably have have seven or eight between the three states. I'd have to go and look. But this is an overwhelming number of votes in the Senate and in less in the House, but in the House representing what is essentially a group of people. They are now overvalued compared to California and New York, especially in the Senate. It, it, it just I, I this should not be an issue. We should we should ratify or or uh, or take take back North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming being states. You know what? All right, I'll I just googled better. it. You're right. South Dakota is eight hundred thousand. North Dakota is seven hundred thousand. Wyoming's five hundred thousand. So less less than less than what? Less than uh, two million there, oh or almost God. like right at two million. Yeah, that's six senators, and and like at least six Congress, uh, six representatives that, that, that those into, and they all vote the same. If they're, if they're all Democrat or if they're all Republicans, I, and even if they were all Democrats, I don't care. It's well, too much power for such a small population. South Carolina has 5.12 million yeah. population. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking to you, Michigan and Ohioans. Yeah. Go there, <laughs> go there. They got lakes yeah. and stuff. Go there. This is true. This is go true. there. If you're here, go there. So with uh, with a little bit of time left, uh, we uh, we have an update on the uh, Donald Trump uh, trial, the hush money trial. Uh, Michael Cohen has taken the stand the past couple of days. So uh, I do just uh, I do want to I do want to visit some of uh, what's going on there. It's been going well for prosecutors. Michael Cohen laid out how long before he announced his candidacy for the White House, Trump was worried the stories from other women would come out in the open and potentially impact his candidacy. Now, Michael Cohen also testified how involved he was in suppressing negative stories ahead of the election and how, in the wake of the Access Hollywood tape, he facilitated that hush money payment to Stormy Daniels. He testified that Trump told him, don't worry, you'll be reimbursed. And then towards the end of the day, we got to the really critical part of his testimony for prosecutors, which is that he testified that Trump was aware of the scheme to reimburse him by making it all seem like legal expenses and to really increase the amount he was being paid back so that he didn't, of course, uh, he didn't have to pay taxes, so that he would be made whole. What's not clear, Jake, though, is if, they, if Cohen's testimony is proven beyond a reasonable doubt that Trump was aware that business records were going to be falsified. After they get through 2017 and the receipt of this reimbursement, then they're going to have to walk through how Cohen eventually flipped on Trump, how he also pleaded guilty to federal crimes, including lying to Congress, lying to the IRS, lying to banks, also election crimes related to this hush money scheme. And then he has to talk about how he has relentlessly attacked the defendant for years and really made a living doing that. So, so far it's been going okay, but, you know, it's only going to get more difficult built for Cohen and prosecutors. Yeah, so uh, uh, so that was day one. And uh, I think I think one of the things that I think makes Cohen a, a poor star witness in this case is how, you know, when he found you, you, you come to realize that after Cohen was uh, denied access to the president after he became president, uh, you find that he became more and more bitter. Mm-hmm. And, and really, I, I feel like that speaks a lot to his mentality. Uh, yeah. You know, is, it, is, is there a possibility that he never would have flipped on Donald Trump if he had been uh, as uh, part of the Trump campaign that moved into the Trump administration, would he have maintained that level of uh, fixerism? Uh, I'm going to call it. We, well, we, and, the, and the recordings we got were n- nothing new either. Yeah, no, no. There's, 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 there's not been anything new. But I think what they're doing, what the prosecution's trying to do, is basically just show: look, yes, Michael Cohen was a sleaze bag. This is what he did when he worked for Donald Trump, and yes, mm-hmm. what he did 
was cover up a lot of the stuff that Donald Trump didn't want to get out because it, it was going to look bad. I mean, well, and he did he did record this stuff for a reason. Yes. But yeah, because he was yellow bellied and he would flip in a minute, but yeah. he wanted that certainty and he yeah. it's there. And yeah. it, it is in all, you know, other circumstances, if if he hadn't have been president, it's there and it's enough. I just I don't think that it takes away from what it is that Donald Trump actually did. And 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 we'll, I've got some other audio tapes we'll, we'll play. Let me let me go into uh, go to, to what was happening in the second day. It started very tough. Uh, Todd Blanche, the Trump attorney, going after Michael Cohn right away from the beginning, asking about things that Michael Cohn posted on TikTok and Twitter. Remarkable exchange. So the first thing Todd Blanche asked Michael Cohen is, you and I have never met. Michael Cohen said, correct, we've never met. Blanche then asked, you went on TikTok and called me, and I'm quoting here, you went on TikTok and called me a crying little shit. At that point, there was an objection. The lawyers went to the sidebar and the judge sustained, upheld the objection. And I think the reason why is Michael Cohen's feelings towards the lawyer are really irrelevant. And so uh, that objection was sustained, meaning wipe the question off the books. And then Todd Blanche came back and said, OK, you posted on TikTok that, quote, Trump belongs in a effing cage like an animal. Now, that's OK, because that goes to Michael Cohen's bias against Donald Trump. That matters here. So we went right to this issue of you have this sort of all consuming personal hatred and a vested interest in this case. And they're continuing to just to sort of piggyback off, off of that. The questioning now, Blanche shows right, Cohen right. an email to see. I if think all this is going to be recollection. Cohen reads the email for several moments. Yes, I see that the recollection that they're referring to is about Blanche uh, telling Cohen that the prosecution asked Cohen to cut it out. And clearly he didn't. Cohen's hatred for Trump is so deep that he's even defying the prosecution in this case, who had, who said, just keep it under wraps. Yeah. And I'll say this. I think Cohen is valid in hating Donald Trump. I think that, yeah. that I think Donald Trump likely made promises to Cohen that, that ultimately he didn't, he didn't pay off, you know? No. Uh, and he and, made Cohen do his under dealings. Yeah. Yeah. Period. I mean, this, this case is about this specific thing that, Cohen did for Donald Trump at the at the haste of Don, like at the instruction of Donald Trump. And so this this one case is is what we have as the example between Cohen and Trump in their relationship. Uh, I, let's sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I I feel like if if there were other co crimes committed that Cohen potentially has, you know, information on or has a background knowledge of, uh I feel like we would basically have to have this whole scenario play out again where they go, well, Michael Cohen was his fixer. Sure. But then Michael Cohen got his healings hurt because he didn't get to join him in the White House. And so here we are. He's out here just uh, making all this stuff up. I mean, yeah. And make no buzz about it. You nor I fucking care for Michael Cohen. No. He is a shit bag just as much as Donald Trump yeah. is. Yeah. But. He's a shitbag who had all the evidence and had all the recordings exactly. and had all the information, who did the things that were too dirty, quote unquote, for Donald Trump. Right. To go yeah. cover up. Donald Trump did the shit and then he had a sleazebag lawyer cover it up. Sleazebag lawyer didn't get his due process or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And got mad about it. That's what I, happens. I feel like one of the craziest parts about this now is that Donald Trump's not really denying what it is he did, but he's explaining it in a way that Cohen was, and he's even quoted as saying, Cohen wasn't my fixer, he was my lawyer. So the reason that it's marked as a, as a, as a, a legal expense is because I had to pay my lawyer for services. Now, uh, that's the part where I think the case gets a little bit weak because if the expectation was, and, and I, I, I will, I will give credence to the fact that I don't know a hundred percent what Donald Trump was thinking when he made the decision to have Cohen pay the guy from national choir right, to go and yeah. shut down this potential story with Stormy Daniels. Uh, did he, did he view it as a campaign expense? Did he view it as a, as a legal expense? And I think that's why they're trying to set up whether or not Donald Trump was doing it to protect himself uh, in his marriage from Melania, or was he trying to make sure that the, 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 the voters didn't have all of the available information? 
Right. But either way, you 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 pay <clears> money <throat> right. to someone, and uh, or money was exchanged to keep something quiet. Uh, and then ultimately, I think that the campaign paid for it, not Donald Trump out of his own expenses. I think that it was written as a payment to Michael Cohen for reimbur- to, as reimbursement for what Michael Cohen did as Trump's lawyer. It's a weird, it's yeah. a weird triangle sort of situation where you go, okay, okay, we figured it out. We're, yeah. we're heading in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, the, 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 the triangle shifts and then like, oh, wait, oh, this is the path we're supposed to be on. And, that's yeah. why I think this of yeah. all of the cases is the weakest. This me, is the one me, that has the least amount of, no, you know, yeah. go ahead. L- let, let me run this by you. The, if he had not done the hush money and just let this be hearsay. Yeah. How bad would it have been right now? It would have been I, a nothing burger. Exactly. And and I, I think I said that before. I think part of the issue of what happened with all of this is because Donald Trump gave it attention in 2017 yep. or 2018. Like, he called out Stormy Daniels. He called out Michael Cohen. He and it's called, not like, like she has fucking family home video of this happening. Right. He could have been like, that's a complete lie. I mean, the, his followers believe that Everything truth is says. lies when he says it anyway. Yeah. So this is just another, that's a lie. Well, like, he does. This, he does this thing on stage where he says things like, "He's like, I didn't have, I wasn't there with her. I didn't. I've never met her outside of it. You know, here. Uh, we'll see. You we'll, all we'll, know we'll, that. You all are smart. You know that. And of course, as soon as he, as soon as he does that thing where he says, where he tells people what it is that they already know, there are there is a vast yeah. majority of our population that takes that and is like, he's right. I knew that. I didn't I know the, it before, but now he yeah. said it. I know it." Exactly. And and I think I think now what more begs the question is, why did he care so much to shut her up? Yeah. Right. Like, did she play Friday Night Poker with Melania? Was (laughs) like, was there somebody that Stormy Daniels was with that would have like blown the top off? And she's like, I have Polaroids of his toadstool dick right here. Yeah. Yeah. There, I think there's something of more substance that maybe she's either not revealing or that happened. Like, yeah. so, something else is more there for him to have given so much of a shit yeah. to be in this now when, dude, he's he's done it before. Yeah, this isn't his first. No, and it, a lot of it he's just brushed off. So why this one? What, yeah. what specifically transpired that day, days, week, that put him over the edge that paranoid him it made him yeah. paranoid yeah that's well, why we're here i think i think i think that my theory is is that what what it is that this one is is this is the first domino so you know when he was running for president they presented the some 16 to 25 individuals that have previously accused him of sexual harassment or sexual assault like there there there's a there's a, a there is at least the a woman two on the page flight. list. Yeah. yeah. There's at least a two page list of these individuals that are claiming that at some point between his adolescence and his, you know, in stage renal disease self right now, <laughs> yeah. that uh, not, not that there's anything wrong with in stage renal disease. I mean, it sucks to have it, but, you know, I'm just saying Donald Trump is fucking 80 years old. If anyone should have it. I mean, let's do all of the all of the discussions about how old Biden is. Do you look at your two year younger uh, friends and go, you know what, if if I if you think yeah, I'm not dude. capable, just look at the guy that's two years younger than me. He's 100 percent capable. Like, yeah. that's not a thing. That's being in your 30s at the same time and being like that 31 year old so much older than me. Thirty five. Like- yeah. Constant, down. <laughs> constantly writing this idea that Trump is so much better than Biden because Biden is two years older than Donald Trump is absolutely asinine. I and don't know. The fact know that it. Trump rides the teetotaler train is absurd oh, yeah. to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Fucking no, dude. So I, I do. I do want to play some uh, some more audio for you because this is just fun. And I've never heard a group of Republicans that are so thirsty than these these particular individuals. So the first oh, one, the, the first one I want to start off, start off with is uh, J.D. Vance from Ohio. Oh, this oh, clown. Yeah, yeah, he's a clown. Uh, number one, I, I'm here for the simple reason to show support for a friend. Uh, I think this trial is absolutely ridiculous. I think it's a sham prosecution. 
And I think that uh, luckily. The- <laughs> Sorry, I hit the phone. friend. Button. Yeah, I- I'll just say it goes on from there. J.D. Vance is uh, uh, an opportunist of like biblical proportions. Uh, yeah, they're he- making Matt Gates molds all left, right and center. Yeah, he he has uh, zero value, and 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 I can support. I I have I have I have the ability to back that up because uh, when you when you look at our country, I, I don't know what direction my hand is at, but you know you've got you've got Florida down here, and you've got California over here, right 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 here, right right here on my hand is is a little state, yeah, a little state we call Ohio, and uh, if you're not from Ohio. Keep listening. If you're from Ohio, uh, you, uh, just hit the fast forward button a couple times to get past this. Uh, Ohio's Your state awful. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ohio's awful. It's uh, <laughs> this is this is a, this is a state that uh, that that plays on this idea that they can be you know moderate. Michigan, and, Michigan put a lake between you. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a state where it's a state where uh, even the people that live there uh, escape from it once yeah, a year. Yeah, they're here. They're here. For, yeah, they escape from this state once a year, sometimes six, ten months, uh, because living in Ohio uh, is awful. I will say there are a few gyms. <laughs> I like Cleveland. Cleveland's a well, really look, nice town. We got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's about I what like, it's got. I like Cincinnati. Cincinnati's fine. And, no, and please understand. Skyline Chili. We could nuke the site for more of it. <laughs> I just want people to understand. I'm not speaking from a, I'm not speaking in hyperbole. I have experience. Ohio is a place. That I've been to Ohio. Fucking no. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. I did. I'm not going to say jail time, but it felt like jail time. I was there. I was there for about nine, 10 months. And uh, oh, Jesus Christ. It was unpleasant. Barrett, are you okay? I never. Was, yeah. I never dude, knew. Let me tell you. It was from August. It was from knew. August all the way to July. Uh, oh, I didn't summertime, see the sun. Summertime. A lot of. <laughs> I didn't see the sun, but once. I was just about to ask you. I didn't see the sun. Once. I didn't see the sun any time I was in Ohio. Yeah, You're like For, oh. there was. I, right. I, now that I think about, it, there was one day. There was one day in February where the sun came out, and and I was like, oh fuck, the sun. I thought it was gone. Uh, I was young then. I didn't understand physics completely. I didn't understand uh, astrology. You know, or, you know, astro- what's what's a, not astrology? Fuck, what's Ohio's uh, state motto? It's for lovers. Uh, Ohio, uh, O H I O Ohio. Uh, what is there? Uh, um, uh, is it Virginia's for lovers or is it Ohio's for lovers? I, I can't remember. I, I, I will say this, uh, uh, Ohio, uh, we're the reason that the Ohio river smells bad. That's, that's gotta be their state's love. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, also, uh, we're this close to Indiana and that place fucking sucks too. <laughs> Our shit rolls downhill to, to Indiana. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, uh, this is, uh, and then there's Kentucky and we touch it. And yeah. It's all tainted. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, here's, uh, here's one of Zach's favorite, uh, former coach of Auburn and, uh, current cesspool of Alabama, uh, Tommy, Mr. Underachiever, Tommy Tuberville, uh, is, uh, is who I'm going to play next. And I'll just say that Tommy Tuberville, if you listen to the beginning of this episode and you heard Zach and I mentioned some pretty offensive things we said about Ireland, Tommy Tuberville's name was the one that actually made that happen. I want to well, reiter- reiterate the same prank. thing. I'm, first of all, I'm disappointed in the courtroom. I'm hearing Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump. He is former President Trump. Give him some respect. I mean, that's what that place is in there. It, it, that's ultimately what I just heard was uh, Tommy Tuberville admitted that no. Donald Trump lost the last election. So he is former President Donald Trump. I will give him that respect. Cohen, are you taping this? Uh, yeah, what I'm what I'm hearing though is that Tommy Tuberville recognizes uh, that Joe Biden is uh, currently the president. No respect. Here's what I'm seeing too. It is depressing. That courtroom is depressing. Yes. This is New York City, the icon of our country. Could you? And whine we got a courtroom anymore? This most depressing thing I've ever been in. Mental anguish is trying to be pushed on the Republican candidate. For the president of the United States this year. That's all this is. He's been here a month. He's been here a month. I am disappointed in looking at the American, supposedly American citizens in that courtroom, that the DA comes in and he acts like it is his Super Bowl. I mean, snowflake alert. I, 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 the boy Donald is Trump soft. is a grown man. Donald yeah. Trump's already complained about the temperature 
in yeah. the courtroom. No, no. Which no, ultimately, there's dudes out there fighting for freedom, but Trump is having to sit his fat ass down and listen to his fucking transgressions. According Poor to re- guy. Yeah, according to reporters in the courtroom, uh, Donald Trump fell asleep uh, during court yesterday as for as much as in one period, 30 minutes. They said he was he was definitely asleep for 30 minutes. That his head was down, his jaw was open, and, and or that his head was back and his his mouth was wide open. Like it's he's falling asleep in a court case that could potentially, if the judge decides, can we do land a reenactment? him in jail? This is this is what Zach. This is what Donald Trump looks like, uh, and Zach has experience in this look because he's had to listen to my diatribes. <laughs> <laughs> uh next up next up is uh speaker of the house uh mike johnson of uh of, of louisiana so i'm just gonna play oh, his tug audio. nuts yeah this yeah, this yeah, yeah, uh yeah. that's a theocracy nut <laughs> exactly this is a uh this is a very special kind of pandering right here the star witness here is michael cohen i just listened to a few moments of his uh testimony this morning and it is consistent with what he's already done this is a man who is clearly on a mission for personal revenge, and who is widely known as a witness who has trouble with the truth. He is someone who has a history of perjury and is well known for it. Yeah, I mean, come on. Like, what? A, I, do you have anything new to tell us, you yeah, stupid exactly. asshole? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm constantly dumbfounded. Uh, so the, the next one I'll play real quickly is uh, Representative uh, Nicole, and I'm going to mess up her name, I think. Uh, Malatakakis of Long Island, which, you know, you would think that would be a fairly liberal place, but no, Long Island is where a lot of the very uh, affluent people live uh, that travel into New York City for work. But uh, but a country is countrywide. Let's go. That is right. So here is uh, here is uh, Representative Nicole Malatakakis. She, she's going to say her name, and I know I'm going to be wrong. Congresswoman Nicole Malatakakis. I represent Staten Island. A little and off. Here she in Greek? New York City. Um, I'm also here Maybe. to support. Uh, President Trump. Uh, the case is called the people of the state of New York versus Donald J. Trump. But the people of the state of New York know that this is a sham trial. The people of America know that it is a sham trial and is based no. on a star witness that is a convicted, disbarred perjurer who lied to Congress multiple times, has admitted to lying before Congress and has been convicted of lying. <laughs> um, what I'll say is the She's people of the state of New York <laughs> would oh, wish that for an Alvin president. Bragg, the district attorney who brought this uh, case, would <laughs> focus on the actual... Yeah, let's focus on that for just a second. Literally, this president has been impeached twice, once for having a phone call in which he asked for quid pro quo from uh, uh, the country of Ukraine, basically said, yes, <laughs> I know Congress has already said that you can have access to these weapons and this, 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 uh, this, what you need to potentially defend yourself from Russia. But what I need, what I need is for you to do, for you to come out with a statement saying that you yeah. all are investigating Hunter Biden and Joe Biden in potential uh, fraud. That's well, what well, I need. She's a witch making a shit cocktail, and she's just dangling the orange turd that is the key ingredient to the shit cocktail. Yeah, it's he's he's had perjury. He's he's for the impeached president. I want to go back to the sham trial. Almost twice in impeached president. Yeah, you don't mind. I want to go back to the sham trial part as well because uh, I a grand jury looked at this evidence and made the decision based on the evidence that the prosecution provided that there was enough evidence for prosecutors to go ahead and have a trial. It, it 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 isn't a sham trial. You didn't. First of all, when this when when the when the grand jury was actually looking at the evidence previously, there wasn't all. I mean, there was a fairly large amount of information out about it, but nobody knew how the prosecutors were going to be going after him in this case. Right. That, that, yeah. that that hadn't been public knowledge. No, but but what you have to be aware of is that twelve individuals looked at the evidence that was presented, listened to the prosecution without any of the defense out there uh, to or, or in the room with them to try and deny any of it, 
they they only had the prosecutors and the evidence that was presented was enough for the grand jury to make a decision that yes he should be a president former president trump should be indicted for charges on this 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 and this and who picked that jury barrett the grand jury it's yeah. completely random exactly 100 percent random it wasn't a collusion it wasn't no. the deep state it wasn't the far left it wasn't the far it was a random picking of people who said this is fuck yep yep it's uh it it, it i i get that people that that don't like the trials going on or that are huge supporters of donald trump or or whatever i i understand they want to pick apart anything they can potentially pick apart but please for god's sake at least understand how our judicial system works and for criminal activity that requires these types of investigations, they also require to be scrutinized by a grand jury for a decision to be made. And it's, and, and honestly, it is so fucking lazy on your part. So lazy for you all to just basically throw out all of the hard work that a grand jury had. I've done a grand jury. I was six weeks sequestered for a grand jury one time. There you go. I know exactly what the process is. I know how little information we have access to outside of what the prosecution's presenting. And I get that may paint a picture of, of them being, but we get to make the decision on whether or not the evidence is enough to say, right. yes, this, this person should be indicted or no. In my time as a grand mm. jurist uh, or on a grand jury, uh, we had, we were presented six cases, two of them moved on to the indictment phase. The other four did not because the state of Georgia did not provide enough evidence to prosecute or for us to consider there being a, a need for a trial. They are, they, are the, they are the first step in preventing wasted tax dollars. Like just, yeah. I'm just, it's ass nice. Um, well, I mean, and, and to even just put it as basically as you possibly can, robberies happen all the time, right? Barrett, have you been picked up for a fucking robbery you haven't committed? Have you been picked up for any crime that you have not committed? No. Just like they came to your house and they're like, fuck Barrett. Barrett's the one. We're getting him. Right. He is there because he did something. Yes. He is there for a reason. Whether to go around and say he's innocent, he's innocent. No. He, to some degree, he's not. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That is That is the plain facts. He did shit. And now he's on trial for it for a reason. They don't this, just come grab you. This is where we are at. Yeah. We are at this place because Donald Trump made decisions that rendered his, that, that moved his future in a very specific direction. And this is where we're at. And I think that once people accept that, yeah. then they can at least allow for the process to play out without constantly having to say, no, this is, this is just the liberals are attacking him. They, they don't want to see him get reelected. If he, if he, if he, if he loses this case, then, then that's the Democrats winning the election. It's like, yeah, potentially. But at the same time, it's also someone being held accountable for committing crime. We can't get away with any of this stuff. So why should Donald Trump? That's I, the last uh, can, can I bring one thing up real quick that yeah. I heard out of uh JFK uh not JFK <laughs> Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. Robert Kennedy Jr. Brainworm RFK <sighs> Dude he he sat on Shane Gillis's podcast and told these boys Yeah I, I, you, saw, did, I heard did that. you hear it? Yeah. He said if Joe Biden Biden dropped out, he would beat Donald Trump by three votes. If Trump dropped out, he would beat Biden in a landslide. That is the only kind of fucking insanity that you hear from someone who's had a worm eating your fucking brain. Yeah, and and this ultimately I need everyone to remember that when you cook pork, you want to make sure that it's cooked to 165 <laughs> degrees in ter internal temperature. Otherwise, you're risking having the same brain eating <laughs> worm that Robert Dude. Kennedy suffered from. They <laughs> literally said there is a hole in his brain where the worm ate his brain. <laughs> yes. In my in my I'm trying to imagine how does a worm go from his his stomach intestine error all the <laughs> way up to his brain. brain. 
And I get it. He's only like 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five. He's pretty he short. No, that that word doesn't have trying to eat much. the pork chop through his ear or something. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I just, just understand, uh, uh, Robert, Robert Kennedy, all due respect to his lineage and, and, and who came before <sighs> him. Robert Kennedy was, uh, was, his time was cut short. I think he would have been an outstanding president. Uh, John F. Kennedy Jr., I think, uh, despite his skeletons, uh, I think that he represented. Uh, he, he. Well, I don't. I, I guess I can't really say. I that. think, I think R- people I think really like his that. RFK. Like, I think RFK would have been fine. Like, yeah, perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. He would look at his son and go, "What the fuck are you talking about?" He'd have to. He'd have to. He'd have it's to be most, sitting just, in a, the most unjust, unsupported bag of shit I've ever yeah. heard in my life. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, if JFK or RFK were around now. Uh, of course, they'd be they'd be virtually world record holders as far as age, but yeah, but I think they'd be looking at their nephew slash son, and and just going, well, this is what happens when we keep it in the family, dude. I'm telling you, like when he said that, I was like, there's no way he fucking believes this. Then this Shane is... Gillis and Matt are going like, oh really? And I'm like, stop. Yeah. Call him on that. Yeah, that's like absurd. that is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> like, which is the same way I feel about Rogan sometimes. I and would he beat does both do of them, but I'm losing heavily. Yeah. Like, what are you talking yeah. about? Rogan will correct some people, but sometimes he'll just kind of go along with it and be like, yeah, yeah, I get, yeah, I could see oh, it. Well, if I had uh, four, four more votes, then like I'm just like shut the fuck up. Also, what? just to just to point out, anyone that's listening that thinks that there's a potential that 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 you could potentially win the presidency by three votes or something like that uh, the electoral college does not work that way uh it's 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 pretty over it's pretty you know when it's over and it's not it's not three electoral votes. no barrett no barrett no one, one kj you're yeah. gonna get him by three no one no one wins by 272 to 269 it just doesn't <laughs> happen it's not a, our math doesn't add up that way i feel like that's probably where we should potentially in this episode yeah. <laughs> there's dumber out there it's not a, it's, it's brazenly just even more dumb uh, oh i was God. i was gonna play i was gonna play some vivek ramaswamy uh uh ass kissing but uh we don't I, have to we no, don't no. have to do that everyone's heard it uh I, I will just say this uh i i did pull out some specific quotes from the 2024 uh primaries uh prior to them where vivek was still running trump made comments about vivek that he he never got really harsh on vivek but what he Skin did do stuck, was, not from yeah. america <laughs> He did. He did say some things that made you think that maybe Donald Trump doesn't like him or whatever. But uh, he said Vivek starting uh, Vivek started his campaign as a great supporter, the best president in generations is what he said. Unfortunately, now all he does is disguise his support in the form of deceitful campaign tricks. I feel like somebody wrote that for Trump. I don't. Well, I don't who was like who, Trump. who was on Vivek's podcast? It was. <laughs> Kelly, some, what was her Kelly name? Kelly Conway. She, no, the other one, the other, the other blonde-haired, just ball breaker. Oh, and she, was, she's she was she, is she the one that's on Fox or uh, McElhaney? No, no, Mac- no, Mac- no, Mac- no, no, nope, no it's, it's it's the other ghoul of a woman. But she told him straight to his face, "I thought you'd be a great president, but I don't vote for you because you're Indian." Yes, uh, I did. I did hear that. That was uh, that she was, was like, what. That was uh, shoot. Well, I, you know what? I'll save that for next week. She has a it's a three named person. Yeah, like a, like a lot of serial or uh, public murderers. So. I almost want to say it was Kellyanne Conway, but I'm. I'm it wasn't not. Kellyanne. It wasn't Kellyanne. It was the other fucking vulture. I know. It's I the can't. other one, and the fact that we can't remember her name is astounding. But she said that yeah. shit. Go look it up, and the look on his face is just he sat there and took it like. Holy crap, you said the quiet thing out loud again. Way to go. He's like, you said the one part of me I don't like about me. Stop it. Oh, God. Yeah, and on that uh, on that sign of future Armageddon's to come, that is going to do it for episode number 205 of the All About Nothing podcast. Hey, links to uh, past episodes, podcast platforms, merchandise, social media are all available on our website, theallaboutnothing.com. And if you think our financial model of giving away free content... Mm-hmm. 
and entertainment is silly and you're in the giving mood why not become an official nothing or by supporting the show monthly members can get access to this episode as well as uh, exclusive content or make a one-time donation through the same link if you want to be a part of the show you can also do that too by leaving us a message at 803-672-0532 you can email the show at theallaboutnothing.com or join our discord server links are available at theallaboutnothing.com I should have taken that really excited breath uh, before I started uh, with the uh, outro. You, I have to do the thing at the end where I'm like, listen to all about all the podcasts, may cause erections that you don't see coming in. <laughs> may, may, have caused, uh, may have caused erections to disappear in the yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, whole, whole, whole medical Not disorder. care about the FDA. Yeah. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> all right. Thank you for listening, everybody. You all stay safe, be kind, and you know what? Keep your hands to yourself. The All About Nothing podcast is produced and engineered by me, Barrett Gruber. Thanks to Cake for our intro music, Sick of You. You can follow everything Cake the Band at cakemusic.com. Thanks to Muff the Producer for our outro music. You can follow Muff on Instagram at Muff the Producer. I am Barrett Gruber. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Barrett Gruber or visit my link tree slash Barrett Gruber. Want to support the show? Visit our webpage, theallaboutnothing.com, and become a member. There are several tiers available, including memberships that give you early access to episodes as well as exclusive content. Visit theallaboutnothing.com. Find links to our social media, merchandise, and past episodes. Visit theallaboutnothing.com. If you'd like to be heard on the show, you can call and leave us a message. Dial 803-672-0533. If the time between these episodes is more than you can handle, check out our partner podcast. Zach and I host What the Pod Was That with Carrie Simmons. Visit whatthepodwasthat.com for links and details. Me takes a deep dive down the rabbit hole and episodes of Welcome to Wonderland, available on all the podcast platforms. Visit WTWLpod.com for details. As well, you can listen to the political and social conversation between Dr. Jamella Brooks and Bill Kimmler on Black, White, and Blue in the South, available wherever you listen to podcasts. Please subscribe and share this show. If you're on YouTube, please like and hit the notification bell. Thank you for listening. The preceding podcast is a product of Big Media and copyright 2024, all rights reserved. This episode of the All About Nothing podcast is brought to you by Blank Canvas Brand. If you own a business, restaurant, or sports team and you're ready to shake things up with that new, unique image, you need to use Blank Canvas Brand. Blank Canvas specializes in brand identity, including logos and graphics for business cards, flyers, banners, and signs. Blank Canvas offers printing services to help with your clothing needs. Look. When it comes to talent and service, there is no one better. For more information, you can search Facebook for Blank Canvas, or you can email blankcanvas at theallaboutnothing.com. That's B-L-N-K-C-A-N-V-S at theallaboutnothing.com. You can find links in the Friends of the Pod section of our website. Visit theallaboutnothing.com.